A2 further maths, rational functions and oblique asymptotes. So what I'd like you to do, just using your first year skills, is have a go at sketching that rational function for me. OK, so pause it there and see if you can sketch that rational function. OK, so to sketch the rational function, what we need to do is we need to look for some of the key points. So the first key points I'm going to look at are the intercepts with the axes. So to do that, we plot when x equals naught, what is the y value? And when y equals naught, what is the x value? So when x equals naught, that's easy to calculate. You just put in naught in for the x's. Minus 2 over minus 1, which is where we get 2 from. So we can plot that. Um, but then we could do the other way. When y equals 0, that means that the numerator is going to equal 0. So we get x equaling minus a half. So I can plot that. But because the numerator is a quadratic, I am going to get a second solution. In this case, x equaling 2. So I've marked down the points where this curve intercepts the coordinate axes. What we can look at now, and you could have done this in the uh, either order, is look at where the asymptotes are. So this has got an asymptote. It's quite clearly got an asymptote because you're dividing just there. OK, so we can look at when is that denominator equal to zero? That could be one of the first things you do. So in this case, when x equals one, that denominator equals zero. Therefore, we can put in an asymptote at x equals one. OK, it will be approaching that line um, when X gets close to one. You can also find out the Y asymptote as well. And before that, let's just check either side of the X asymptote. So we're going to check this side of one and this side of one. So something like 0 0.9 and 1.1. Substitute it into there just to give you an idea that if you substitute in 0 0.9 on this side of the asymptote line, what's that value going to be? All right, so if I tried 0 0.9, I would notice it's going to be positive, whereas if I tried 1.1, .1, I realised it came out as a negative. So therefore, I can work out where it's approaching that asymptote, whether it's approaching it from positive infinity or negative infinity. Right, so once I've done that, then what I can do is I can look at um, the horizontal asymptote. And what I've noticed is as X gets bigger and bigger on this case, what happens that Y just gets bigger and bigger. OK, and it doesn't matter whether I took a big, a big number or a big negative number, big positive or big negative. This function just here doesn't have a horizontal asymptote because the numerator has got the biggest order. So can I actually plot it from here then? Well, I can see that the line is going to come up. It's going to approach there. But from here, I'm not sure what it does. The ones you've seen in your first year often had a horizontal asymptote, so you knew it sort of curved round to a horizontal asymptote. And the same here, it would cross round to a horizontal asymptote. But in this case, it doesn't really work. And I haven't made any mistakes because I can see that there can't be an asymptote here, where this one's approaching, um, because this one doesn't make any sense on this part. So there's got to be another asymptote. And the reason why this is different is because you never looked at any rational functions like this in your first year. In your first year, the only situations you had is where the order, in this case, order two, the quadratic equation, would have been on the denominator and this would have been your numerator. And so you only looked in your first year at ones where the order was always higher on the denominator than it was on your numerator. And this has messed us up. This has been this has made us a bit different because now the order on the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So how do we deal with that then? What do we do? Well, so I just said because there's an order on that, there's no horizontal asymptotes. That's the reason why when we start putting big x values in, we just get really big y values. There's no horizontal asymptotes. Does that mean there's no other asymptotes? No, it doesn't. There are other asymptotes. OK, so just to demonstrate, look, order two over order one, it's definitely big on the top. So therefore, we don't have any horizontal asymptotes. What we do have is what's called an oblique asymptote. So grab your notebooks then, please. Title will be oblique asymptotes. And like it says there, if the order on the numerator is one degree higher than the order on the denominator, then the rational function has a linear asymptote called an oblique asymptote. So it still has a, um, an asymptote, it's just not 
horizontal or vertical it is oblique okay so get down what you need in your notebook you might want to just pause there okay so to find the equation of bleak asymptote, you're going to have to write the irrational function in this sort of form. We need to expand it out. And so you, this is why you're doing it now, because you've done some of these skills in your first year recently of doing these sorts of divisions, and simplifying these rational functions and put them in more into this form and then be going further from there and doing partial fractions. Right. So how do we go about doing that then? So if I want to sketch the graph. So if I want to look at um, how to write that in that form, I'm aware that it's going to look like this when I divide it, because the x squared divided by the x is going to get some amount of x. I'm also going to get an x divided by x, which will get me some sort of number. And I'm also going to get some number over x minus 2, which, uh, x minus 1, sorry, which will be at the end. So I'm setting it up because I know I've got a quadratic divided by a linear function. The answer I'm going to get is some sort of linear function plus a remainder. And so that's how I've set it up. Right, now I know that a quadratic divided by a linear gets a linear function. Then what I can do is I can use the same sort of skills that you use to find partial fractions to calculate the A, the B and the C values. So I'm going to multiply through by X minus 1. And what I end up with is 2X squared minus 3X minus 2. So that's that numerator equals ax times x minus 1, b times x minus 1, plus the c value, because the x minus 1 will cancel out with you multiplying by x minus 1. Uh, what do I do then? Well, you can expand it if you want to and compare coefficients. You can substitute x values in. So you might want to say, well, I'm substituting x equals 1. That would help me cancel, um, find out what c equals. I could put in x equals 0. That would cancel that one and allow me to get b because I just calculated c. And then I could substitute anything I like in to get a. So that's one option. Okay, just using different x values. Or you can expand and compare coefficients. Totally up to you. All right, both methods are perfectly sound in this case. So I'm comparing coefficients. I've expanded it. And now I'm going to look at the x squared on this side compared to the x squared on this side. Okay, so the x squared, so I've got two on that side and I've got a on that side. So there we go, straight away, I know that the a value equals two and most of you would have spotted that straight away because you've got two x squared divided by x is the only way you're going to get an x value. So that's definitely gonna have to be two. Um, then you can look at x's, this one's not so straightforward. You've got minus three there, you've got minus a plus b but don't forget i know what a equals now it's two so a bit of rearranging gets me b equaling minus one my c value my constants at the end uh minus two there um equals minus b plus c here because no x is attached or no variables attached to those parts so there we go i know that b equals minus one so i'll substitute that in i'll go to plus one taken over here c must equal minus three so i now know that i could write this equation the one i sketched a minute ago that i'm part of the way there and i could write it in this sort of format those two are equivalent to each other so why bother why would you want it in this form and not this form this form is quite quite um difficult to find things like the asymptotes and stuff like that from so why would i want to change it over well the answer is this will help you find that missing oblique asymptote. Same sort of way as done before. What I'm going to look at is as x approaches either plus or minus infinity, what do I notice about this side when it blows up? But what do I know about it in this form? Well, now I know that this part just here will disappear. Because the bigger x, um, x gets, the bigger that denominator gets and you're dividing by three by a big number. Three divided by a big number definitely starts to approach zero. So that leaves just this part, 2x minus 1. So this part will disappear and you're left with 2x minus 1 as your oblique asymptote. So what you're left with just there after you cancel out the part that's got the fraction on it is your oblique asymptote.
So generally speaking, anything in this sort of format, some X value, some B value, some C value over some sort of function, the oblique asymptote is always that linear section just there. OK, so in this case, it was 2x minus 1, but it can be absolutely anything that's in front of that part. So any x and any number. OK, right. If you're thinking, why didn't you do that in the first year? Like I said, in the first year, you didn't have any like x squared. At most, they were both the same. And if they were the same, it would be the same question or the same way of doing it, except you wouldn't have an x value just here. You will just have a minus 1. So you could still use the same technique in your first year, but there wasn't much point. It was easy just to substitute in the, um, the large X values. OK, so pause if you still need to take any notes. And let's go back to our sketch then. So we had all that information so far on our sketch, didn't we? But what I know now is I've got the oblique asymptotes. So at this stage, I would need to write this in this form. And once I've got it in this form, all I need to do is just write down Oblique asymptote is the 2x minus 1. So y equals 2x minus 1 would be my oblique asymptote. If I sketch that on there, there we go. Let's sketch on there. And I can do the same as I've done normally. I can check values on either side of that oblique asymptote. And the way I do that is by looking at big um, um, numbers on either side. So big negative numbers and big positive numbers. And I just check whether they lie above that line or below it. So here goes an example. If I had like a big negative number, something like minus 100, let's say, or minus 1,000, and I substitute it in here, what I notice is that side is greater than the line. So when I substitute in a big minus number, that side is greater than the line. So what does that mean? It means it's above the line. Whereas if I try to substitute in a big value, a big positive value, something like 1,000, let's say, and I put it in this side, you get smaller number than if you'd put it in this side. The only difference between those two, if you look, is what you're taking away. So if I'm taking away a negative, I add it on, which is why that's greater than that. Whereas if I'm taking away this and it's a positive number, if you take away a positive number, it's definitely going to be less than it. So there we go. There's my lines. And now I'm in a position to sketch it through. So I can finish it off by just sketching the graph. And there we go. There is my rational function sketched down with this new oblique asymptote. OK, so what I'd like you to do, please, is just have a go at sketching those equations. So go through the process, go through the algorithm in your heads, find the intercepts, find the asymptotes. If it wants maximum and minimum values, it doesn't in this case, find those. Then find the oblique asymptote and then sketch the graph. OK, so pause there, have a go at all three of them, and I'll show you the answers. OK, so let's have a look if you managed to do question one. So in question one, we got some sort of sketch like that. So you can see your oblique asymptote there should have been a half X plus a quarter. If you did it all correct, you've got some interception points. It looks like it's at six. Um, and you that is the only interception point in this case because the numerator in this one uh, doesn't have any solutions, any real solutions, so therefore it doesn't cross. We do have a, a crossing um, asymptote here at minus a half, and there's the other asymptote like I've already mentioned. Okay, what next? Uh, three, uh, sorry, x squared minus four, all over three minus x. So we notice in at the top, the numerator at the top is an x squared, whereas this is just an x, so it's definitely got an oblique asymptote. I can also notice that the top is going to have 2 and minus 2. Minus 4 equals 0, so it's crossing at 2 and minus 2. And it's going to have an asymptote at 3. So I can start putting all that information on. There we go, asymptote at 3, crosses at 2 and minus 2. Here's my asymptote just here, okay, which I found by um, multiplying 3x by ax plus b c over 3 minus x and worked out the a and the b values and when i did i got minus x minus 3 and i got that sort of graph okay right so have a look at the last one so noticing that the top has got x squared bottom's got an x so it's going to be an, another oblique asymptote example so what do i get well i find the intercepts the intercepts are 2 and 4 in this case that's what makes the top equal to 0 
the numeric equals to zero. Um, there is no um, intercept with the x in the y axis. Y can't equal zero, doesn't matter how hard you try. So therefore, sorry, x can't equal zero, doesn't matter how if because uh, if you do, you're dividing by zero, so you can't do it. So it doesn't cross that y axis at all. Um, but you can rearrange this, so you can write this as ax plus b plus c over 4x. Rearrange that, work out the a, b, and the c value, and then before you get this equation, okay? Um, you don't actually need even the c value as long as you can work out the a and the b. Right, so well done if you managed to get those. If not, um, just spend a bit more time on the, um, those sections and go back over some of your notes with graphing um, rational functions. OK, so given that, let's have a look at a, a slightly different way around. So I'm giving you the asymptote for that curve, but part of that curve, we don't know what um, some of the values are. I've got ax squared plus bx plus 4. So although I can start thinking maybe about some of the asymptotes, I can certainly get an asymptote from the bottom. And I can start thinking about maybe some of the intercepts. For example, if x equals naught, I can still work it out. But I am stuck because I don't know what the a and the b values are. So what I can do is I can think, actually, I know what the asymptote is going to be. Um, the as this oblique asymptote, that is how we could go about writing this equation. If I rearrange this equation and wrote it in ax plus b plus c over 2x minus 1 form, the ax plus b is my oblique asymptote. So I get this, that I know I could write that in this format, ax plus b plus c over 2x minus 1, because I've got a quadratic over a linear. But I also know that this will be my oblique asymptote. So using that key skill that you've taken from this lesson and saying, right, this is my ax plus b, and I could get given it either way around. In this case, I've got given it as the asymptote, so I can substitute it into, the, into it in that form. Or you might have put it in this form so therefore you can work out the oblique asymptote okay you need to be very wary of being able to do both okay so once I do that same as normal times by 2x minus 1 there we go so I've times by 2x minus 1 I can expand and I can compare coefficients so no different to what I've done before but this time I'm working out what the equation of the rational function actually is before I can do any more work uh, so I can see that a must equal 6 I can see that b must equal minus 7. So those two are quite nice. And if I need to see, I can see that c would have to be 2, because 2 plus 2 is 4. OK, I don't actually need it. I need to just get the equation. And there we go. 6x squared minus 7x plus 4 all over 2x minus 1. So I've managed to work out the a and the b value. Right, what can I do now? I can work out when x equals 0, what's y. I can work out when y equals 0, what does that numerator become? got two solutions I can work out the asymptote and I can certainly I already know the oblique asymptote because it was given there the key difference on this one is stationary points so I've put that on because I know some of you might have forgotten how to work out the stationary points so I'm just going to go through that bit as well okay right so let's have a look at your graph so there's our, asymptote, our oblique asymptote put down there is no x intercepts because the numerator, the 6x squared minus 7x plus 4, can't be, um, is not negative, so it's got no in x intercepts. It has got a y intercept at 0 minus 4. I can see that, 4 over minus 1. I also know that um, it's got an asymptote at a half, so I can substitute that in. So I'm guessing my equation is going to come and do this and something like this. It has to, to cross there. And if it does that, it's not crossing this one. Okay, if we cross the x-asymptote, the, um, the equation will probably be on that side. It's not, so I know it's going to be on here. But the other thing I need to know is where does it turn? So it comes up, does it turn at the 4, or does it turn just before it or after it? And the same here, where's the turning point on that? Where's the stationary point? So I do that, um, just to remind you, by setting it equal to k. So I set it equal to k. So this is finding a stationary point without calculus. I can then rearrange and set it up as a quadratic. So I've just multiplied by 2x minus 1 there, and I've got that to this equation. I've rearranged, 
and I've set up as quadratic 6x squared minus 7 plus 2kx plus 4 plus k. Okay, so there's my c value. Now I know the bit I'm looking for is when k is turning. Okay, so I'm looking for where it has a repeated root. If I was up here, it would cross twice. If I was down here, it wouldn't cross at all. So I'm looking for where that k value comes down, just starts to turn, and I'm looking for the k value, which is a line straight across, of touching just once. So I can do that. I'm looking for when b squared minus 4ac equals zero. If you've forgotten how to do this, go back over the previous lesson. Make sure you fully understand how to work out um, stationary points without using calculus. So I set that equal to naught. I can substitute in the 7 plus 2k minus. I can substitute in the a value of 6. I can substitute the c value of 4 plus k. And I end up with this. I end up with 4k squared plus 4k minus 47. And I can get my k value as a rather disgusting minus a half plus or minus 2 root 3. That's how high it would have to be. Now, to help me plot it, I'm just going to be um, calculating it in my calculator to see what that k, k value is as a decimal. And then I'm also working out the x values, probably by putting it back in and working out the x values from here as a quadratic as well. So I've done the work for you. There we go. I've done the x values as well. And 2.946, sorry, and minus 3.96 are when that's plus or minus 2 root 3. Right, so that means I can now plot, there we go, there I go, those two values, and I can draw those in. So there you go. Right, one thing that's worth noting is the examiner could ask this in a slightly different way. He could say, when is this graph undefined? And what he means by undefined is when you've got a y value that it can't equal. In other words, it's, it's range. When's it defined will be its range. So I know, that it's undefined between that number and that number. So there we go. That's what it's saying here. The same technique to show that the region is undefined. Y is not defined between those two values. So within that region. 